If you can do this, your timing will follow and your accuracy will follow in how effective you play the notes also better in time and speed will all follow from that if you have this all in place. Hi guys, what's up? Jorge Reinigs from Sharp 11 Music here. Today I want to talk about saxophone technique and the misconception, uh, to be more clear, about saxophone technique. What a good saxophone technique really is. I see so many saxophone players talking about the wrong things when they talk about having a good technique or a certain player that has a crazy technique. Mostly it's about their speed and the difficulty of their lines. But that's not really having technique, guys. That can be the outcome of a good technique, but it's quite a misconception to think having speed is having a good technique on the saxophone. So let me give you something to consider how to think about having technique on your saxophone differently. And it's namely this. You want to practice for control, not for speed. What does that mean, having control on your instrument? Well, that means it shouldn't seem to be a struggle to press the right keys or even get sound out of it. Um, it should seem effortless. And how can you get there? Let me give you one simple exercise to check if you have a proper technique. Play the chromatic scale from the bottom of your instrument to up to the high F and see if you can stay in touch with all the keys on your instrument, if possible, of course, because the side keys, you need to go a little bit um, yeah, to the side. But let me give you an example. So I did this already quite too fast to be really uh, practicing, but this was just to show you the example. I think I kept pretty close to all the keys, uh, if you can of course, like I said, if you go to the side keys you're lifting all those fingers in a sense, but certainly when you're not going to the side keys you should stay in touch with all the general keys uh, for the D, E, F, G, a, B, and C. That's the general ID. So try this out. Are you keeping contact with all those keys while playing any of the chromatic notes? Chances are big you aren't. I mean, I will be also probably be doing this when I will improvise because I'm thinking about different stuff, about what to play, which rhythms to play, which notes to play, and then you're focusing on something different and then um, mostly you're a little bit less in control there. But this is what technique is all about. So the things to look out for is try to have as little tension as you possibly can in your uh, muscles of your fingers. So be the most relaxed you can be. Generally that means uh, not too much straight fingers, but just uh, when you're relaxing your hands, your fingers naturally go in a more curved position. You know, you can see we come from the apes. We have this little bit of taking branches and bananas. Um, so curved fingers, that's probably how you have the most relaxed state of your fingers. Then the next thing is you want to be efficient. You want to be making as little movement as possible. So that means keeping in touch with the keys and not doing this and go back. That's way too far. You need so much more time for that. Certainly when you're in the end playing fast lines, that really can make difference with um, playing it in time or never reaching it in time. <laughs> Thirdly, you want to think about just uh, when you press down the key of a saxophone, then you're activating your muscle. And when you release that key, most people pull it away, but you shouldn't be pulling, it's just relaxing. And because of all those nice springs involved in um, yeah, pushing the keys back up, if I, if I let it loose, it just 
pops back. I don't need to make the key go back. So it has a bit of its own pressure that will pull your finger back in place uh, by itself. So that's important to remember. The only thing you should really should do is press a key like this and then let loose and goes back into a natural stand, even with my uh, fingers uh, without the keys. So press and relax, press and relax. It's not press and pull. That's not a movement you should be making on the saxophone. So try this out, try to think of all this, just in, in general, try to think about keeping your fingers as relaxed and close, just in touch with the instrument. And let me know at which point are you now? Did you ever consider this? Or if you're like me, um, it goes good for a certain amount of notes, but you have just some bad habits of pulling away one certain finger. For me, it was uh, this index finger on the left hand, you know? It's easy to, if you go from a C to an A to really, you know, pull it away, but you should just do this. I mean, it's a bit, bit ridiculous to go, you know, three times as far as you need to go. That's really practicing for control. And if you can do this, your timing will follow and you, your accuracy will follow in how effective you play the notes also better in time. And speed will all follow from that if you have this all in place. Check out Charlie Parker. There are just a few videos on here on YouTube where you actually can see him play, but really watch those videos and pay attention to his fingers and his movement. His technique was really good, not because of his fast playing that followed from that good technique, but just how he managed to um, make the least effort possible and be really in stable control of his instrument. So one last tip to consider is you can practice this even without producing sound, which comes in handy when you're having your saxophone with you, but you are just waiting at a certain place. For example, at the train station or anywhere. I did this exercises at many different places. If you are waiting for the train, take out your saxophone, then um, you don't need even to have the neck and the mouthpiece on it. You just need the body. Um, and then get your fingers in a neutral position so that they are in touch with every, every key. And then you start doing, for example, a chromatic scale. Can also do a major scale. That doesn't really matter. And just think, be mindful about putting your finger down. How it feels to put down that exact note. Now I'm at the E flat. And also going from an E flat to an E. You know, and this finger is, for example, also one that wants to jump up quite easily. So pay attention to that. That's one of my pitfalls when going from an E, uh, sorry, from an E flat to an E. It's easy to go like this. See that? That's easy to do, but really and keep in touch and then go to the next one. Just really check if you, you don't have to do this fast at all. Just really check if you keep in touch with the pearls of those keys. And then of course the chromatic scale is one thing to know. Then you also can do the same things you would do, uh, for example, going through scales, you might uh, do it in thirds or in fourths. So you're practicing the connection between different intervals and different notes. That's all about coordination. If you do like fourths, then you go from a C to a F. That means that you're uh, lifting or not lifting up three fingers, you're releasing the tension of three fingers, their muscles. That's a better way to uh, think about it. That's, that was bad explanation there. And then from a D to a G, that's quite okay. From an E, whoa, look, I go from a D to a an E and there, this finger is really 
I have kind of a mind map of which fingers I tend to do this uh, badly on. So like I said, my index finger is one. Um, if I'm not in control, this one will be certainly lifted up. My ring finger here is one for sure. And the pinky also in combination because those are tied together with a muscle. That's probably why, but become really mindful about how to behave and move on your instrument. I hope this was valuable. If you think so, maybe leave a like or a comment and surely let me know in the comments, uh, where are you at when doing this chromatic scale? Are you keeping contact and was this video just worthless? That's also possible. Or are you the opposite and letting loose of almost every uh, key that you don't need to be pressing down? Um, or probably you're maybe in the middle. Let me know how you think about technique and maybe you're not agreeing with this kind of way about thinking about technique, but I think it's about control, guys, not about speed. So let me know what you think and also let me know if there is another topic you want me to discuss here and I'll see you next time.